AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X3D was announced at CES, and Gordon, for the past week, you've been testing it rigorously. Uh, in this video, we're gonna cover the content creation and power results uh, from your testing, uh, but we also have a video on how this whole uh, stacked Vcache chip works, uh, which you can go watch. Uh, we also have another video planned for uh, gaming and productivity uh, benchmarks, but let's dive right into this one. Gordon, uh, tell me about your testing setup and what parts were tested. Oh, okay, so I actually tested, uh, of course, the Ryzen 9 7950X. I tested that against a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, brand new. All Both of those were tested in a gigabyte uh, X670 Aorus Master motherboard, 32 gigs of memory set to uh, DDR5-6000. This was put against an Intel Core i9-13900K in an MSI Z790 carbon Wi-Fi board, uh, also with 32 gigs of RAM, also at uh, DDR5-6000. I also did do some KS testing in there. Both of them were cooled with the identical Corsair H150i Elite uh, Display Capellix uh, uh, coolers, and both were powered by 1000 watt power supplies, and both also were loaded with Windows 11 22H2, brand new, uh, latest NVIDIA drivers as of last week, and of course the mighty uh, GeForce 4090, uh, not a reference card, but a gigabyte 4090 is still pretty damn mighty, and let me say that card is stupidly fast, <laughs> so. All right, so you've got uh, the, the latest hardware, You've got the latest software revisions. Yep. Uh, all of it will, will be noted. Uh, let, let's dive into the testing. Let, let's start with Cinebench all-core workload. What, what what are we seeing here? Well, so you're basically seeing it has 16 cores, but because the Vcache version, the X3D part, cannot run all the cores at the same high clock speeds, mm. it's going to be a little bit slower. In fact, about 6% slower than a normal X part. Because remember, both hmm. have these same high 5.7 gigahertz boost, but that X part will have an overall better multi-core uh, score because all the cores can run at you know pretty much high frequencies, whereas the X3D, just like the original 5800 X3D, the clock speeds are a little pulled back because mm. of the cache that sits like on a sits on it like a blanket. So because one of those dies has the stack cache, we're essentially seeing about six percent performance decrease in Cinebench under an all-core load. And the, the 7950X was already behind Intel, uh, but it looks like from the 13900K, it's dropping down to 11.4% behind. Yeah, Intel, um, you know, it's hybrid architecture with 24 cores is is it's paying off really well in Cinebench, right? All-core loads, it, it can have a decent advantage over mm -hmm. AMD sometimes. That won't be all the time. In fact, you'll see that when we get to other tests, uh, it may have more cores, but you know AMD is a really efficient design. It's on a you know leading TSMC ed, uh, edge process node, so it's uh, it just uses less power and it's just going to run a little harder than the Intel for what it is. So hmm. okay, so we're, we're we're seeing the X3D part uh, in all core load, uh, uh, you know a little bit behind the the non X3D part, but that's multi core. What about single core where? you would hope in Cinebench it's gonna load up the, the fastest core that you can, so what are we seeing there? Well, uh, it, Intel leads the way. Intel's you know, latest performance core in the 13th gen as well as the 12th, 12th gen are very good parts. Single threaded performance um, is, is pretty much in front of everybody. It's in front of AMD, it's in front of uh, Apple with M2, M2 Max, M2 Ultra, whatever, it's just simply faster in Cinebench. It's definitely faster than the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, but honestly, for me, the messaging is, is very much 7950X versus 7950X3D. Because remember, one of the promises that AMD made was, hey, you know what? Ryzen 7950X will give you basically very high single-threaded performance. You're not going to lose anything against, a, a not, against an X with the X3D, whereas if you took a, a 5800X3D, 3D and put it up against a 5800X, it would lose because it couldn't hit those high clocks, right? Mm -hmm. So single thread of performance suffered. And you see that, uh, in fact, you know, the I would say it's a tie here, but the X3D part is slightly faster, you know, just under 1% faster than the, the X. And that basically means you're getting the same single thread of performance as an X. So hmm. the whole idea was we will give you 
great gaming performance with the V cache and we're going to give you really good single threaded performance as well against a, an X part. So you're not going to give up anything against a normal X. So you're not going to have to pick there. Hmm. But of course, you know, Intel would like to say hello from, <laughs> you know, about 8% faster. In fact, if you look at that 13900KS, uh, it's 23, it's 11.5% faster than that X3D part. So hmm. it is it is a smoking fast CPU. It's also using a ton of power to get there too, but you know, hey. So the the idea of the best of both worlds. Hey, if you if you if you need that lightly threaded TAS, you're not going to lose anything over the X part. But you know, if you load up uh, all core workload, you're you're going to lose a little bit. So TLDR, kind of a little bit on on Cinebench. I'd say the TLDR is you are not going to get all the performance of a 50, of a 7950X. All cores are going to run harder all the time. It's not a huge difference though. It's you know fairly minimal, single digits. Um, if you really want though the single thread of performance, you're you're gonna get it. So mm -hmm. there's you're gonna it actually kind of reveals the weaknesses of the strength and the strengths of the chip at the same time in non gaming tasks. Mm -hmm. right? That makes sense. Okay. So moving on from Cinebench, your your favorite uh, benchmark I know, to we're, run. We're there all the time. <laughs> uh, let's talk about V-Ray. What what are the results in V-Ray? So V-Ray is is a good example of Cinebench, which is a 3D rendering benchmark based on a real world rendering engine, oh, more cores are always going to be better. Um, that's not always true. We see that in a lot of places. V-Ray is a, a place where, uh, frankly, AMD is better. Remember, this is 16 cores going against 24 cores for both Intel parts, and both AMD parts are ahead. And mm -hmm. we again see what we saw with uh, Cinebench. By the way, 7950X, where you can push all the cores as hard as you can, is going to get you a little more performance. In fact, the X3D part about four to five percent slower than the X part. Hmm. Because, hey, remember, it can't run all the cores as fast because you have the blanket of that V cache on one of the dies. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, expect to give up about five percent, but the good news is you're still ahead of both Intel parts. Uh, but by five percent, so. Yeah, yeah. by five percent, that's okay. pretty decent, okay. right? That, that's, that's not bad. Uh, well, next up, what, what about Blender? So this is the Blender benchmark. It basically uh, downloads three benchmarks. Uh, I run it with the Blender 3.40 engine version. Uh, you really don't have too much control over what it does. Mm -hmm. But again, it's another 3D running benchmark. More cores, more threads, better. And we see that uh, overall, uh, there is a, that weakness for uh, X3D versus the X part. You know, mm -hmm. about, again, 4%. 6% for a classroom, 4% for junk shop, you know, 4% for a monster. Um, you know, again, not a huge amount, but you know, you will get more performance out of the X part that you're not going to get out of the X3 mm -hmm. again because that that cache die is going to slow it down mm -hmm. a little bit. But, but again, but either way, it's at least on par or faster than Intel. Yes, and that is the good news if you, so <laughs> like if you want you don't want to give up that all core. You're a three, you know, modeling artist. You know, both AMD chips are are good. Uh, obviously, X is slightly better for if you're a three D modeler. And if your workload is, I work ninety nine percent of the time in in a three D modeling application, then you might actually want to have uh, the X over the X three D part. Save a little mm -hmm. money, get a little more performance. Okay, well, what about handbrake, more encoding? So more encoding, so we're gonna move on from 3D rendering. This is using the latest version of handbrake 1.6.1, and I'm actually doing an SVT AV1 encode. The NVIDIA card does it in hardware, handbrake does not support it. So the only way you can run it, in fact, is using the CPU cores. Hmm. Of course, some video nerds will say that's always better anyway than using the GPU. By the way, Intel is faster. So we'll, we're going to get out of there. In fact, it's significantly faster by 21.5%. Because short, uh, shorter bar better. Shorter here. bar better here. And basically it means you're going to save, your encode will be about 21% faster with an Intel CPU over both, you know, over that X3D part, hmm. a little less uh, against that X, but significantly faster. Um, it is actually heavily multi-threaded, but it just goes to show you that sometimes, you know, even though 3D rendering would sort of tell you that Oh, I always need, if I need all core loads, AMD's can be better. And it's specifically under SVT AV1 encodes using CPU, Intel is better. I also want to point out, of course, before somebody else points this out, is that uh, Intel probably did the optimization for handbrake uh, using SVT AV1. So the fact that it runs a little better on Intel, maybe, 
or you know who knows I mean if you're gonna write the code for somebody you're gonna make sure it's highly optimized for yourself <laughs> at the same time if I need to do a lot of AV1 CPU encodes I don't care what your politics are so okay at the same time you again see X versus X 3d a little bit slower three three and a half percent not too much not, not, too not much. a lot yeah, three percent but, but again not crazy. you know you you can't push all those cores as hard as you can with the X so you give up a little bit you give up a little bit and we're seeing that in handbrake hmm. okay uh, what, what about uh, near and dear to my heart Adobe Premiere Pro yeah no this is uh, Puja, Puja bench 0 0.96 uh, using uh, almost the latest version of Premiere Pro because they've actually come out with yet another new version. Oh, of course. We're looking right here at the standard run. The overall score, uh, obviously the blue bars are the biggest and we have to point it out, a significant amount, 30% uh, over the X3D part, you know, 31% for the chaos part. If you are looking at a review or reading a review on the internet and that's the only score you're gonna see, um, you do need to look a little deeper because there are reasons why Intel leads uh, so much in this benchmark. And that is because uh, it basically, the, the Premiere Pro likes to do some encodes that supports Intel's QuickSync that's built into its CPU. So if you're doing hardware encode that's supported by the Intel CPU, you get a big advantage. But, and, and you tested it with the IGP on. I do test with the IGP on. One, uh, Puget Bench says, well, you should run that way because why would you turn it off if you're a video editor? Because there's no reason to turn a feature off if you get a big advantage of it. And you get a huge advantage uh, in the live playback score. So that basically is where you're watching uh, the video run by in Premiere. And oftentimes it's where you're running that multi-camera. So specifically multi-camera, that's where you're getting a big advantage from the Intel QuickSync. It's huge. It's 90% over the X3D part, hmm. right? So it's, and then both the KS and KS parts are you know basically lapping the AMD part because again, the quick sync in the uh, hardware encode engines in the Intel parts make a big difference. And then honestly, but the good news for X3D versus X, it's pretty damn close. You're not giving up a lot. You know, yeah, actually, it's like the three to four percent. Three to four percent. Yeah. Really not a big difference. I would say I wouldn't sweat it, but clearly overall big win for Intel here. X, X3D, again, the message is things that require all cores or a lot of cores and, you know, are generally going to run a little bit better on the X part than the X3D part. Uh, and if you want to see more explanation of uh, the, this actual specific benchmark run, uh, yeah, we, yeah. we did do a video. Uh, I'll link it uh, to it. Uh, it's re really good video uh, if you want to know more about that. But what, what about uh, Photoshop? Okay, so again, this is Puget Bench using Photoshop. It scripts Photoshop through a whole bunch of actions. Um, mm -hmm. Overall winner, again, Team Blue. KS, uh, which is pushing the highest clocks here. You know, it's about 9% faster than that X3D. The uh, K part's about 8.5% faster. And the, again, the surprisingly a little bit worse here. I thought it would be a closer, but again, not a, not a deal breaker. You know, the X is about uh, 3, 3.5% faster than the X3D part hmm. overall. Is that a lot? No. I mean, you know, 2.5%, 4% against the uh, X versus uh, X3D. Hmm. But you are again paying premium pricing for a little pinch less performance in Photoshop. Interesting. If you're okay. looking at Team Red. Okay. Well, what, what about uh, Lightroom? Uh, the the numbers look a little bit different here, actually. Yeah. No. This is actually a little a little interesting because I didn't expect this. Overall winner is again, mm, although not huge. Team Blue is right there, doing pretty good. But honestly, look at that X3D part, right? Really not bad for the overall score. Well, it's actually better than the the non-X. Yeah, no, the non-X is is yeah, it's actually losing to the X3 by you know two and a half percent, you know, and again the K part is only about two percent faster than the um, the X3D, huh. so not a big deal. And the, even the KS about three and a half percent. That's the overall score though. If you're only looking at the overall score and that's how you pick what CPU is better, you're probably doing it the wrong way. What you need to do if you use Lightroom for a living, if you care more about actual responsiveness when you use it, pick on active score. That's how Adam prefers it. If you just kind of care about how long it takes to export it when you're done because you hate waiting, then you want to pick for the passive score, which is actually kind of what I care about. Yeah, well, and, and that that's where the X3D actually has an uplift over the X. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. Something about exporting in Lightroom 
favors that, that cash. Yeah, it is a little bit of a surprise, right? You wouldn't think the cash would make a difference. It's about three and a half, four percent faster than the, the X part, right? Yeah. Yeah, and basically it's actually slightly faster, although it's basically a tie with the uh, Intel K part. Yeah. Uh, though when you look at active scores, both Intel parts, you know, with their high energy, high clocks, they have a decent lead, you mm -hmm. know, nine, eight percent faster than both AMD chips and then you know basically the x and x3d are dead even in the active score because again your active score is probably lightly threaded you're moving in the interface and as we saw in cinebench um the x and x3d are essentially similar performance under hmm. light loads right hmm. very light loads basically very similar performance interesting okay uh well that, that's that's all the benchmarks uh that you have but you did do some some testing around power usage which i find uh, pretty interesting this this first one is is going back to cinebench uh, r23 but doing an all core run uh, explain explain the the thought process behind well, this Well, so I like to look at the actual power use while the entire system is uh, using it. Some people look at just the CPU. Some people measure, you know, input to the motherboard. There's some kind of different ways you can do it. I look at the way you would pay for it, which I think is the ultimate decider because how much money you give out every month to the power company is what matters. There's a huge disparity between the X3D and, of course, even the, the regular X versus both Ks, the K and the KS, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, well, and it, it, in terms of actual score between the 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 K uh, and the KS versus the the X3D, we're, we're talking about a, a 11 perform 11 around 11 percent right. less performance <laughs> on the X3D part versus those Intel parts because they're actually rendering more in that time. Right. But the the K is using 30 percent more power. <laughs> the KS is using 57 percent more power. To get to just get that little little you know uh, double digit gain. Look at the 7950X is using 352 watts on average, versus uh, 472 watts for the 13900K. Hmm. And when you're getting to the 13900KS, <laughs> it's using a phenomenal 515 watts while running a single iteration of Cinebench default. And of course, people were super hot, angry, screaming about Ryzen 9 7950X power consumption. It was off the hook compared to Ryzen 9 5950X. But look at the power that the X3D is using. It's basically down there at 328 watts. So 328 watts versus 352. I mean, yeah, that's not a huge amount, but that is a, it's definitely using less power versus that, uh, but it, that it, X part. It, but it does seem to scale because it, it's using uh, about 7% less wattage and turning in uh, a 6% less score. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it it's, it's actually seems to, to scale just a little bit. Yeah, and I guess part of that's, you know, the sleight of hand is like, yeah, we had to pull the clocks back a little bit, so we're going to pull yeah, the yeah. power consumption a little worse. Which makes sense. So one thing I should say about this, though, is the way I run the system for Intel is the default mode. Because, you know, technically on paper, for some reviewers, they may follow the letter of the law, which according to Intel is PL1, PL2 set at 253. Uh, I actually set it to default. And basically what I'm, I'm recognizing is if you go out and you buy a Core i9, 13900K, and put in any high-end motherboard, this MSI carbon I'm using is $500. It will ask you, are you using a water cooler? If you're using a water cooling, okay, that 253, uh, TDP limit, we're to ignore that, we're gonna let you go. We're gonna set maximum. Shoot it to the moon. Shoot it to the moon. It does the same thing for KS, because on paper, uh, a K part is 253, a KS is 320 for their extreme profile. Mm. Uh, in reality, any high-end motherboard will basically set it to unlimited. Wow. So that's why you're seeing the very high power utilization here. Probably a little bit higher than what you would if it were actually up to the, to the letter but it's still not going to beat the Ryzen for, for power efficiency. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. That, that, I mean, either way, yes, you're, you're getting a bigger score on Intel, but yeah. you're, you're using more you're, power you're to get You're burning the, a lot more power. More All power core load there. is, on Intel's that, that's, again, you know, they're, they are they are an Intel 7. They are still behind, a, you know, a full process node behind AMD's chips. Okay. And that reality comes out here where they're just, 
they can't really compete when you're pushing all the cores. And you have 24 cores to push. Yeah, well, well but that, that's pushing all the cores. What about just pushing one core, one one of your best cores? How, how does that look? Well, for that, I run Cinebench again, and you can see the, the CPU that's actually the most efficient is, again, that Ryzen 9 7950X 3D part. I did also collect the averages for this where I cut off the idle states again, which I want to point out is lower for both Intel parts. Um, the X3D part, uh, the overall about 122 watts a average. Uh, looking at the, the uh, 1300K, uh, slightly more at about 125 watts. So pretty close for both those parts. The Core i9 13900KS, 135 watts. But the Ryzen 9 7950X though is 146 watts average. So I will say that AMD looks like they have gotten the power actually better for the Ryzen. Because remember, if you actually look at the single threaded performance on both of these CPUs, they're identical. Identical, yeah. So this is telling us that basically, at basically the identical score in Cinebench using a single thread, the X3D is using considerably less power. I mean, you're looking at 122 watts versus 146. Mm -hmm. So shaving off 24 watts, I don't know where AMD got the wattage savings, but mm -hmm. I would have imagined it, you know, uh, it wouldn't be that different. But it, it, it still is interesting to see that under all cores, Intel is obviously using way more power. But here under single core, just core for core, the, the Intel parts are actually <laughs> not too bad. Not yeah. actually too bad. And that is, a, that is a misconception that a lot of people get wrong on the internet because everybody assumes the 13th gen just drinks power. It does drink power if you can use all the cores. But actually, in things that are very lightly threaded, it generally can save more. It will use less power than a, than a Ryzen part. So that's 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 a reality. That's I've seen that X three D is a little better, definitely. But versus the X thirteen Gen, definitely was a better uh, power conserver on light loads. Hmm. Okay, so to to wrap all this up, uh, once again, let's go back to Cinebench, your favorite, uh, and look at yeah. your, your your thread scaling. Uh, Please to describe the thread scaling again. Yeah, so the, the idea that I, I like to do this because it's just a fun science project. Um, and the reason I'm using Cinebench because it is an easy to control, it's a known, known, it's a known benchmark, you know how to control it, it's very predictable. So I basically take Cinebench R23, I set it to do a single run instead of doing a 10 minute loop because I didn't want to take hours to do this. And I basically run it from one thread all the way to the maximum amount of threads mm. the CPU has. So like okay. both chips, actually all four chips here have 32 threads. So I run from one thread all the way up to 32 threads. You know, typically what people do is they look at single threaded performance, multi-threaded performance or all threads. They never look at what's between. I'm kind of interested in what, what happens in between those because yeah. sometimes you run something it may only use eight threads or maybe you're running two applications and they're you know occupying different CPUs. So it's, it's a fun experiment. Yeah, well, and you can see the performance here of both the X and the X3D part. Yeah, and so for the, the X and the X3D, obviously at the, at the lowest end, uh, you know, the single core, you know, up, up to about, it looks like a, about eight cores where it's the the performance is pretty much the same, and that's that's obviously using that 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 performance oriented CCD, right? Right. Uh, but then it kind of gets a little bit different because then you you start to to factor in that second CCD, which has the lower clocks. Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of like that that you're kind of seeing that kick in at a, at about eight threads, and then and then it kind of continues. Uh, continues on. You, you actually kind of have this in a, in a different kind of chart where you show percentage gains, and I think this kind of looks a little bit better. Yeah, and you know, again, this is the X versus X3D, and on that left side of the chart, you're seeing that, you know, honestly, it's a back and forth between the X and X3D that basically is within the margin of error for yep. Cinebench, because it doesn't produce the exact same score every time. <clears throat> but again, that, you know, it is, to me, this is showing that AMD is delivering that promise of giving you lightly threaded performance on par with the X. Because mm. that really was the Achilles heel of the 5800X 3D. With the Ryzen 9 7950X, on lightly threaded tasks, you are getting you know that best of both worlds and you're getting basically on par performance with an X and we're seeing the proof right here, you know, all the way up to eight threads, it's dead even. You know, but then at the same time, you sort of see like, oh, yeah, the the X part will actually give you more performance than the X3D part as you start to load it up with, you know, 
um, more tasks across all the cores. You're looking mm. at four percent, four percent, five percent. You know, not a huge difference. That's why I difference. I don't. I don't think it's really a big deal because you know, four to six percent, seven percent is. It might be worth the squeeze. You know, again, go watch the the gaming side of this. It might be worth the squeeze for some people. Like again. If you are a 3D rendering, that's the only thing you do, and you know you don't want to go to Threadripper, you don't want to go big box, you want an all-core, 16-core Ryzen. Do you want to pay the premium for the cash version? If you don't play games, I would say no, because you're paying a premium for the cash version. Yep. You really just need, I would rather have the more performance across all the cores that I'm pushing all the time for my 3D modeling. Yep. I think that's a, a better task if you don't care about the cache. The, the idea is that this is truly a hybrid approach of, yeah. hey, you, you get your content creation, or you, you might lose a little bit on content creation, but what you gain in gaming could, could help bring that back. Yeah, and I, again, you, you gotta go watch that other video, but there are, let's say, many, many times where it's eye-opening performance you expect of that vCache version. So mm -hmm. you can see why a lot of people are going to say, I will give up that 7% difference on that all-core load, that 4% in the mid-range, because I don't care. Because it's <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I tw I'll take 20% in this game that I play versus 4% in a you know, medium-load game or medium-load uh, task. Well, but the, uh, the, the, the real other question out there is, how does the, the 7950X3D compare to the 13900KS, which is the, the top end... Uh, of the the Intel stack, so looking at this this uh, same scaling chart is a little bit different. Uh, at the at the, the the lower thread counts, uh, Intel definitely has that lead. But then in the middle, AMD picks up, yeah. and then towards the end, uh, Intel gets the the game back. Why, why are we seeing that? Well, I, I would say again, remember your the Intel part is made up of performance cores and efficiency cores. There's eight performance cores. Once you burn through those, which you're sort of seeing on the left-hand side of this, you start, then you start using the efficiency cores. The efficiency cores aren't as fast as the performance cores, mm -hmm. so it kind of loses ground. So it's almost like seeing two cars drag race and seeing one take off the line, pull ahead, <laughs> and then seeing maybe halfway down the drag ship, the other car catch up and go ahead of it. But as they reach higher speeds, the car that can hit the higher speeds pulls mm -hmm. ahead. Because I again, you know, the KS part was a a CPU that a lot of people don't think makes any sense. I probably would agree that it doesn't make any sense unless you just want to win. Uh, you don't care about power, as you've seen how much power it uses. But the 13900 KS is basically the best of the best of the K parts, made to use more power mm. and made to basically be the first on the comparison charts, even though it's only first by 5%, or mm. maybe 6%. A big deal, worth $180 more than a regular K? Probably not. But the whole point of it was just to be first to six gigahertz and to be best. And bigger bar better best. works best. a lot, and the CPU sort of does that. And well, and honestly, uh, the, if, we, if we replace the KS part here with just the K part, it would look similar, right? It would look very good. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's why a lot of people say KS makes 0% sense because why would I pay $150 more for 4 to 8% if that? I mean, you'd be lucky to get 8%. 5% more performance than a K. Maybe. <laughs> and then I think you have to understand there are people who, I want to be best. I, you have a K, <laughs> I have a KS, and that is what it's for. And, you know, honestly, for Intel to get to 6 gigahertz, was a milestone and it would have been embarrassing to have AMD beat them there. So even though it doesn't make a lot of sense for the value, for the for the actual performance gains, it makes a lot of sense from a, from the corporate point of view. Interesting. Okay, so to, to, to wrap it up, I mean, you, you've done all this testing. Once again, this is just one half of the equation. If, if you're looking at a 7950X versus a 7950X 3D, and you're going to use all the cores, and you're doing rendering and content creation stuff. It's probably not going to make sense, right? To get the, the the 3D version and 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 pay that extra money. I don't I don't think so. If you're pure 3D, like you really need core count, you need high frequency across all cores, and you're you don't want to pay a price premium because again, you're talking about paying more to get a little less performance. If you sort of live at that far right of these, you know these 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 charts where you just need a higher, you know, Blender score, you need a higher Cinebench score, you need a higher V-Ray, 
it's probably not worth it unless you play the games. But the games though, but before you make that decision, go watch that game video because X3D is not made to, you know, be the best in Blender, be the best in Cinebench. It's made, it's made to be the best in gaming. But it's it's also not that bad, right? So I, not, I, think, yeah. I think the question is, you'll have to see in the next video, is do the offsets in, in heavy workload content creation tasks, is that brought back by what you get in gaming? That's kind of the, the best of both worlds strategy that they're trying to get here. So right. uh, we, we've come to the end uh, of the content creation uh, and, and, and power uh, section of this. Be sure to watch the, the, the gaming and the pro productivity. Uh, but th thanks everybody for watching. Thank you, Gordon, for testing. Be sure to subscribe for more uh, of the CPU testing videos. Uh, hopefully, Gordon, you can get a little more sleep uh, yeah. after all this. <laughs> but who knows? There's always new products coming out. So be sure to watch the next video. Thanks, everybody. We will see you later.